Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just waiting a few more seconds while everyone gets into the webinar. All right, there we go. Well, welcome to Visit Milwaukee's monthly webinar series. Today, we're gonna to be joined by Danette Justice, creator of the Wisconsin-based Reading Rainbow style program, Just Us and Books, which has drawn national media attention and sparked a love of children, a love of reading in children across the country. And I have to tell you, I met with Danette and what she does is she makes reading enjoyable and educational and she shares um, stories of Milwaukee in the locations as she reads the books. I think you're going to love what she does. And I really wanted to share her story with all of you today. Then we're going to hear from David Spiegelberg and Heidi Schultz at Travel Wisconsin as they share information about the many grants that can help promote your business to new visitors. But first, let's get started with April's Star Report. Downtown Milwaukee held steady year over year with a slight uptick in demand of around 500 room nights. However, despite the stable year over year occupancy and demand, the average daily rate and rev par increased by 4.7%, creating a million dollar increase in revenue year over year, resulting in a 5.2% increase in revenue. And in the county, we saw heightened demand and occupancy year over year, which contributed to a 10.8% growth in revenue over April of 2022. That was nearly $3 million in additional revenue. So the hotel industry is stabilizing, but we are still behind in occupancy. We really have seen quite the increase, 15% uh, increase in hotel supply, which is the main driver of the revenue increase year over year and over 2019. Now I'd like to welcome our new and returning partners over this past month. Uh, one is BK Clear. Community Advocates Public Policy Institute, Feeding America, Eastern Wisconsin, the Milwaukee Branch, Good Kind, Lakeside Bakery, Ninja Japanese Steakhouse, Hillcrow Coffee, Sweet Green in the Third Ward, Sarah Graf, and the Uptown Crossing Bid. And I know we have many, many more to announce next month. And with the first pick in the 2025 NFL draft, the NFL selects Green Bay. By now, I am sure you've all heard the exciting news that Green Bay was recently named the host destination of the 2025 NFL draft. This event will draw visitors from across the world um, to our state to witness one of the biggest spectacles in sports. Like the Ryder Cup in 2021, the economic impact of an event this size will create a ripple effect across the entire region. Now, we may not see quite the rates we saw in 2021 with the Ryder Cup, but we will certainly see some uh, demand here in Milwaukee and the surrounding area when the draft comes to Green Bay in 2025. I really want to say a huge hearty congratulations to the team at Discover Green Bay on all of their hard work to secure this momentous event. I want to say congratulations to the trade on the grand opening of the new Marriott Autograph Collection Hotel in Deer District. The new hotel features incredible homages to Milwaukee's trade workers and craftsmen in every detail. The breathtaking new space features three restaurants in addition to Food Fights Il Cervo on the roof. And it also features three bars, outdoor patios, heated patios, um, overlooking the Deer District Plaza. You want to be at this hotel. It is beautiful. You can find more information on the trades website. Summer in the City of Festivals is literally right around the corner. The fun kicks off this weekend with Pride Fest. Hope to see you all at the opening, fest opening festivities on Friday. Then Polish Fest the following weekend, June 9th through the 11th. And later this month, you can head to the world's largest music festival, Summerfest, as they celebrate their 55th anniversary for three weekends with headliners such as Dave Matthews, Buddy Guy, Japanese Breakfast, and more. And of course, it wouldn't be summer without a day at the Wisconsin State Fair. From August 3rd through the 13th, make your way to the Wisconsin State Fair for 11 days of fair fun, including main stage headliner Shaggy with salt and pepper. You guys can push it. Push it real good. Jeff Dunham, Kids Bop, Never Stop Live Tour, and more. 
To see the full list of festivals and dates, check out the City of Festivals page on the Visit Milwaukee website. Not sure where to start? You can also head over to our blog and spin the wheel of fest, the wheel of fest to help you plan your summer in the City of Festivals. Speaking of festivals, be sure to join us for Visit Milwaukee's annual meeting and party with the partners reception on the grounds of Henry Mayer Festival Park on Wednesday, June 14th from 3 to 7 p.m. It starts at the American Family Insurance Amphitheater, and then we will go over to what you probably know as JoJo's Martini Lounge, where we can listen to some great music and network. If you're interested in sponsoring, visit Milwaukee's annual meeting and party with the partners. Hurry up, our sponsor signage goes to the printers on June 2nd. You can reach out to Meg McKenna if you'd like to be part of sponsoring this amazing event. Keep an eye out for the Visit Milwaukee team at the Milwaukee Pride Parade this Sunday, June 4th in Walker's Point. The parade steps off at 2 p.m. and will make its way along 2nd Street in a grand celebration of Milwaukee's LGBTQ plus community. And afterwards, stick around and enjoy the Walker Point, Walker's Point Pride Block Party. Learn more information about the Milwaukee Pride Parade on their website. I want to give a huge congratulations to the Pabst Theater Group on raising the stunning new 27-foot sign on the Pabst Theater in the Milwaukee Theater District. This year, they are also celebrating their 20th anniversary. Thank you to Gary and the entire team at the Pabst Theater Group for 20 years of bringing fantastic music to our city. Make sure to stop by the Pabst Theater to see the brand new signage on your way to your next show. This week also marks the opening of Jazz in the Park. Beginning on June 1st, enjoy the smooth sounds of jazz in the summer air of Cathedral Square Park during this popular free weekly event. All summer long from June through August, experience 12 different artists and groups beginning at 5 p.m. on Thursdays from June 1st through June 6th, and then again from the 26th of July through August 31st. For a full lineup, schedule, vendors, and more, visit the Jazz in the Park page on the East Town Association's website. Beginning this Thursday, the Milwaukee Ballet will wrap up the 2022-2023 season with Encore, a mixed repertory of five classical and contemporary works at the Baumgartner Center for, the Dan for Dance in the historic Third Ward. Concluding with the season of Timeless Tales, the Milwaukee Ballet will perform excerpts from performances such as Esmeralda, Graduation Ball, and Can I Say Anything? You can learn more about the show and get your tickets on the Milwaukee Ballet's website. Downtown Milwaukee is cooking up another great downtown dining week for 2023. Beginning this Thursday through June 8th, you can get discounts and deals at more than 30 restaurants around the downtown area. And with lunch specials as low as 15 and dinner for as little as 35, it won't be hard on your pocketbook. Downtown Dining Week is the perfect opportunity to try something new or indulge in one of your favorite restaurants. For more information, you can check out all the menus as well on Milwaukee Downtown's website. Art lovers, next Friday and Saturday, make your way to the village in Wauwatosa for Art 64 a two-day bracket-style interactive live painting challenge. For four rounds, artists will go head-to-head -head in a race against the clocks as they create a work, a work of art in just 60 minutes for the grand prize of $20,000. You can find out more information about Art 64, check out the bracket, and plan your weekend in Wauwatosa this weekend on the Discover Wauwatosa website. The East-West Bus Rapid Transit is almost here. The nine mile transit service will help connect the downtown area to Wauwatosa and the near west side neighborhoods, making commuting a breeze while reducing traffic congestion along Blue Mound Road and Wisconsin Avenue. You can explore the route and plan your commute at eastwestbrt.com. On Saturday, June 17th, explore the rich history of the historic Concordia neighborhood with a historic home walking tour or a historic neighborhood trolley tour. Explore the streets of the historic Concordia neighborhood and discover the social history of its residents and their efforts to preserve, promote, and revitalize the area. You can find out, for, find out more information about the historic Concordia neighborhood home tour and book your tickets today at hcni.org. On Monday, 
June 19th, be sure to join us at the Milwaukee Juneteenth Day celebration. This is one of the oldest and longest running Juneteenth Day celebrations in the nation. The day will feature family fun, delicious food and drinks, and the Juneteenth Jubilee Parade featuring floats, marching bands, and so much more. Be sure to stop by and say hello to my team and give us a wave on the parade route. You can learn more about Milwaukee's Juneteenth celebration at JuneteenthMilwaukee.com. Parents, the Charles, Alice, and Villa Terrace Museums are hosting immersive, creative, and fun summer camps for children ages 8 to 12. With a different theme each week beginning June 26th, enroll your child in a summer camp to explore everything from the artistic dis disciplines of painting, drawing and sculpting, to gardening and exploring the beauty of insect ecosystems. Registration is now available. You can learn more and sign up at cavtmuseums.org. On November 2nd, Bruce, Bruce Coburn will return to Milwaukee for the first time in over five years at the South Milwaukee Performing Arts Center. Throughout the evening, the legendary guitarist will play a selection of hits from his 31 albums spanning over five decades, including If a Tree Fail, Falls, Pacing the Cage, and many others. Tickets are on sale now. Visit the South Milwaukee Performing Arts Center's website to get your tickets. Harley Davidson is revving up for a special summer with the iconic bike brand's 120th anniversary celebration. From August from July 13th through the 16th, the Harley-Davidson Homecoming Festival will welcome riders and motorcycle enthusiasts from all over the globe for a weekend of bikes, fights, and tunes. Kick your summer into high gear with free events throughout the city and get your tickets today for the main event. The Harley-Davidson Homecoming Festival concerts in Veterans Park. Feel the roar of thousands of fans as festival headliners, the Foo Fighters, Green Day, and many more take to the stage. You can explore the Harley-Davidson Homecoming Festival festivities and get your tickets at the festival's website. Calling all volunteers. We need you. USA Triathlon needs you to help make the 2023 USA Triathlon Nationals a success. From August 4th through the 6th, you can be part of the action and experience this thrilling event up close and personal by volunteering for a shift with the triathlon. And I have to tell you, it is such a rewarding weekend I've done it for the last two years, and it is absolutely amazing to see these athletes cross the finish line and do what many of us, myself especially, could never do, which is do this triathlon. It is absolutely amazing. So if you've got some time that weekend, make sure you go to um, visitmilwaukee.org slash USAT and sign up to volunteer. Two weeks ago, my team and I made the short trip down to the Windy City for Wisconsin and Chicago Day. In partnership with Amtrak and Travel Wisconsin, Visit Milwaukee, along with 30 partners from across the state, gave commuters a taste of the good things brewing just 90 miles north. This takeover of Union Station's Great Hall immersed travelers in a beer garden setting with food and beverage samplers, samples from some of our partners. We had games, we had entertainment, sponsored by the Milwaukee Theater District. It was truly fantastic. Our team also hosted an event for sales, um, for, sorry, for meeting planners, as well as some travel journalists in one of the side rooms. And it was, it was amazing to hear how excited they are about Milwaukee. Earlier this month, we also celebrated National Travel and Tourism Week in a week-long recognition of the many industries that continue to benefit and drive travel and tourism forward and generate incredible impact on our community. Throughout the week, we each day recognize some of the essential attractions, resources, and organizations that help draw visitors to Milwaukee. And we can't wait to show you just the amount of impact that happens through travel and tourism in a few short weeks when we're able to share with you numbers from the state that shows just how impactful travel and tourism is. Um, on Monday, during that week, we kicked off the Travel and Tourism Week with a press conference at Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport in conjunction with County Executive David Crowley and Milwaukee International Airport uh, Director Brian Dranzik. We were able to spotlight the vital role that tourism plays in our local and state economy. We were also excited to announce the de debut of our collaboration with Experience Milwaukee podcast 
to help launch the Work in Milwaukee MKE podcast, highlighting workers in the hospitality industry, including our very own digital marketing manager, Miranda Allison. Then on Tuesday, we honored our volunteers with a happy hour at Motor Bar and Restaurant on the Harley Davidson Museum campus. We have so many incredible and dedicated volunteers, many of whom celebrated 25 years with us. Our volunteer program is actually 25 years old this year. And many of these people that we celebrated and recognized have been with the program since its inception 25 years ago. They are the front line. They are the ones talking to our visitors every day and helping to, helping to help our visitors navigate the city. So it was an amazing event and the volunteers were incredibly happy to be recognized. Then we celebrated the impact of meetings and conventions on Wednesday in, the con in concert with a topping off ceremony at the newly renamed Baird Center. Meetings and conventions generate a sizable impact on our economy. And with the expanded Baird Center opening in the spring of 2024, Milwaukee will be able to continue to grow as one of the hottest meeting and convention destinations in the country. That Thursday, we highlighted the impact of the many festivals that help our city shine all year with the City of Festivals Social Media Giveaway. The week-long giveaway received 431 entries from excited festival fans. And then we capped the week off with a celebration of the significant role that sports tourism plays in our city's economy. To mark the occasion, we announced the return of Bobby Portis as Milwaukee's official hype man for 2023. In the latest installment, the Milwaukee Bucks big man hosts story time at the Milwaukee Public Library, a, lends a helping hand at the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Regional Conference, and crafted his signature con cocktail, A Little Bit of Love, at Honey Bee Sage. Watch the video and explore Bobby Portis's Milwaukee on the Visit Milwaukee website. Tee off for a cause this summer at Visit Milwaukee and the Greater Milwaukee Hotel and Lodging Association's annual Greater Milwaukee Hospitality Open. This year, it will once again be held at Milwaukee County Park's very own Brown Deer Park Golf Course on August 16th. Gather your foursome, hit the driving range, and keep an eye on your inbox for registration information. Finally, save the date for our next webinar on June, Tuesday, June 25th at 2 p.m. as we share a sneak peek of the all new Visit Milwaukee website and show you how you can promote your business through the streamlined Simple View integration and the brand new events page. Keep an eye out for the sign up link and the recap email following today's webinar. Now, I'd like to turn it over to Danette Justice on her, in her ongoing series, Just Us and Books which has captured national media attention, as I said before. Featured on Good Morning America, Danette's video series takes young readers on a journey as she reads books from places like Lambeau Field, Fiserv Forum, and the top floor of the Northwestern Mutual Building. Through her work, she sparked a love of reading in countless kids across the country. She's also a teacher, an amazing teacher, who was named the Positively Milwaukee Educator of the Year for 2022. She's taught elementary grades in Milwaukee Public Schools for over 31 years and has served as an academic coach. Her love for books led her to launch her very own YouTube channel where she currently has 100 plus read alouds. So without further ado, Danette, if you could turn your camera back on and tell our audience exactly what it is you do. Thank you so much for that warm introduction. Um, again, my name is Danette Justice. I am an academic coach with Milwaukee Public Schools. Um, I was at a school called Dr. King for 19 years and I am currently the academic coach at Seaford Elementary. Um, I've been there for 13 years. And so at the height of the pandemic, um, when we came back to school, I usually go into the classrooms and do a read aloud with the kids, welcome them back to school. Couldn't do that. And so what I did was I just got my phone out, recorded a video on my phone and uploaded it to the teacher's Google Classroom. And that was that. Uh, one of the students wrote in the little chat um, of the video, Ms. Justice, you're a good reader. <laughs> Thanks. And one of the teachers said, you know, what are you going to read next week? And so next week became another and another. And that's kind of 
where Just Us and Books was born. And so most of the read alouds at first were done within the school building. And then one day um, we had a snow day and I, it was a scheduled read aloud day. And so I decided to go out into the snowstorm and read a snowy day. And the feedback I got from that read aloud was wonderful. People were like, oh, you need to do this a little, you know, do that more often where you go out. Um, and so I thought, oh, let's take the books elsewhere. And so my first read aloud outside of Milwaukee, uh, MPS was actually at Timberman Field. Um, they allowed me to come in during the pandemic. I read a story on Bessie Coleman, and then the students got a view of Timberman Field. We actually got to get on a plane, and they actually got to see that, and so they were very excited about that um, as well. I also had some wonderful opportunities at the Riverside Theater, and then the one that kind of sparked everything was, I was invited to the top of Northwestern Mutual. Um, and if you've ever been to the top of Northwestern Mutual, you know that it has a beautiful view of the city. And so when I was showing it to the kids, a lot of the kids were like, what's that? Where is that? I, I didn't even know we had these things in the city. And they were talking about things like Lake Michigan. They were talking about Summerfest. Um, Pfizer Forum, American Family Field, and Pfizer Forum is probably less than a mile from my school. And so here are things that are sitting right in the heart of the city, less than a mile from them, and they had absolutely no idea what these, um, these places were. And so what I did was I said, okay, I have to go to these places. I'm going to connect literature and literacy with it, but then they're also going to be able to take a virtual field trip with someone that they know. And that's kind of how the, the reading rainbow uh, of Southeastern Wisconsin came about. Um, I've had some wonderful experiences going to uh, some of those places. I've been to Summerfest and yes, Pfizer Forum right after the uh, Bucks won their championship, um, Lambeau Field. But I've also been um, going to a lot of local businesses. Um, uh, Cranky Al's, um, Funky Fresh Spring Rolls at the Sherman Phoenix, where I connected a book to exactly what uh, uh, Truman was doing. He was making the spring rolls and the book that we read connected right along. There is a book for everything. There is a book for everything. And I can definitely find a way to connect the book and the literacy to all the businesses here in Milwaukee. Um, I love that I got to, I, I've been able to firsthand see the fruits of my labor. I've been um, back in the classroom since January. And I knew that teachers were using the read alouds, but it's been interesting watching the kids use the read alouds. I brought in the actual book. So watching the kids following along, they are developing a love for reading. Um, I'm building a culture of reading in our building. And I'm also building a culture of love for the city of Milwaukee as well by exposing them to all of the wonderful landmarks and businesses right here in Milwaukee. So, oh. Uh-oh. Mute myself. That's just a little bit about why I wanted you to be on our on our on our webinar. So, for anyone who would be interested in hosting you, is there a good way to get a hold of you so that they know how they can share their space? I see some of the callers on the call. We've got Bart a lot of restaurant group. There may be an opportunity for you to share, do one of your read alouds at one of their locations. How would they best get in touch with you? Um, I. You can reach me by phone or my email, um, which is um, missjreadsbooks at gmail.com. Missjreadsbooks at gmail.com. Feel free to also subscribe to Just Us in Books. It is on um, YouTube. I do update it weekly. And during the summer months, I will be updating it twice. So during the summer months, there'll be two new read alouds a week, a virtual field trip and activities for parents, children and educators to use as well. So um, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll be a learning tool um, through the entire summer to help prevent that summer slide as well. And also give parents some places to take their children as well during those summer months. Um, you can also reach me by phone. 
um, 262-385-4235. I can um, be reached by phone or email, um, either one, whichever one is uh, most convenient for you. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jeanette. We really appreciate, we appreciate what you're doing for the young people of our community. Thank you for being here today. And if anyone needs that information, just feel free to reach out. I will provide it and we'll send it out her email and how to sign up to get her updates in our next insights. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I would like to take a moment to introduce David Spiegelberg and Heidi Schultz, who are going to share how your business can take advantage of some of the millions of dollars in grants awarded through Travel Wisconsin. David Spiegelberg is Travel Wisconsin's regional tourism specialist for Eastern Wisconsin. He works as the liaison between Travel Wisconsin and the tourism industry in 18 counties, from Walworth in the south to Door County in the north. He informs and assists industry partners with all aspects of Travel Wisconsin's marketing services and programs. He specializes in the field of silent sports tourism, working specifically with the ski and snowboard industry, golf industry, and bicycle industry. He also works on several international initiatives through Travel Wisconsin's membership with Great Lakes USA, Marketing Consortium, and Cruise the Great Lakes. He's a sixth generation Wisconsinite who was raised in the small hamlet of Wilmot in Western Kenosha County. And he now calls Lake Geneva home. And he's fortunate to have the entire coast of Wisconsin as his work territory and playground. And joining David is Heidi Schultz. Heidi is Travel Wisconsin's grant specialist. She's been with the Travel Wisconsin since 2016 and she works closely with Travel Wisconsin's regional tourism specialists and industry partners from the idea stage all the way through the grant process. Her favorite part of the job is working with the industry and learning about their ideas on how to make tourism rise to the top in the, in the cities that they service and helping them to make them come to fruition. Heidi lives in the Adams Friendship area with her husband and four daughters. So David and Heidi, I'll monitor the question and answer and the chat, and I will let you take it away. All right, thank you so much, Peggy. And thank you, Danette, for the work that you do with literacy and reading. Um, we at Tourism, we love field trips, and I just love the whole idea of matching uh, field trips up with literacy programs. And Peggy, thank you for all the updates uh, in regards to what's happening in Milwaukee this summer. You've got me excited and uh, I'm reminded if I'm bored this summer, it's my own fault. So I look forward to getting up to Milwaukee, take uh, part in some of your summer activities. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for the opportunity um, to join you today to discuss Travel Wisconsin's work and specifically our GEM grant program. As Peggy shared, my name is David Spiegelberg and I serve as the regional tourism specialist in Southeastern Wisconsin. And um, regional tourism specialist, really that's uh, what it says on my business card, but I really think of myself as the boots on the ground for the tourism industry here in Eastern Wisconsin. Uh, my goal in my job is to keep the entire team at Travel Wisconsin abreast about the tourism landscape in places like Milwaukee. And at the same time, um, keep our industry partners like Visit Milwaukee and all of you on the call informed about all of Travel Wisconsin's programs and initiatives. So thank you, Visit Milwaukee, for giving Heidi and myself this time today to share information about Travel Wisconsin and more specifically about our GEM grant program. And Heidi, would you like to say a few words? Thanks, David. Um, as you stated, I am Heidi Schultz. I'm the grant coordinator for Travel Wisconsin. It's my job to work with our partners and the regional tourism specialists to help bring grant ideas to fruition. We work from the idea stage all the way through to a successful grant submission. And again, thank you for having me today. So in a moment, we will share details about some of the successful GEM grant projects that were funded in Milwaukee in the past. And we're pleased that Milwaukee is home to a sizable number of successful GEM projects, but we also realize that there's always room for more opportunity with our grants. So our goal today is to provide you with detailed information about the GEM grant program with the hopes that it will inspire you to think about future grant opportunities that might exist with your organizations. But before we dive into the specific topic of grants, let's start with a quick overview of the agenda for today and some background information about Travel Wisconsin and the work that we do. 
So our agenda uh, will provide you with a brief overview about the mission of Travel Wisconsin and the work that we do to promote Wisconsin and Milwaukee. We'll review a list of some successful Milwaukee-based GEM projects, and hopefully some of the projects will look familiar to you. We'll then share some detailed information about the various categories of the GEM grant program, and we'll share information about timelines and deadlines for applying for grants. And then also, we'll also talk about um, some of the best practices uh, for applying for a grant, and then we'll close hopefully with some time for question and answers. So the Department of Tourism markets Wisconsin as a premier travel destination under the brand name of Travel Wisconsin. We are the state's destination marketing organization. Our mission is to cut through and inspire travelers to experience Wisconsin through our statewide marketing strategy in an often crowded and competitive national tourism market. And we know that travelers don't just stumble upon vacation destinations, they make decisions based on information they receive through effective marketing and strategic initiatives. And that is what we do at Travel Wisconsin. We promote and elevate the reputation and brand of the state of Wisconsin to drive economic impact. We foster a positive travel experience for all and engage partners across the state with shared goals. So more simply put, we work to inspire visitors to discover the unexpected in destinations throughout the state. And we know that when they do, they will drive economic growth with money spent in our communities. Tourism creates jobs, it brings revenue and, positive, and positively impacts the livelihoods of families across the state, including destinations like Milwaukee. And it's for all of these reasons that we at Travel Wisconsin work with all of our partners statewide like you. So our work is grounded in our brand, which is the lasting impression we make and the reputation we build. Our brand promise, Wisconsin, where the unexpected is ready to be discovered, is a tangible, authentic benefit that makes Wisconsin a desirable place to visit, and it's a promise that all of us in Wisconsin can stand by. We put enormous emphasis on brand, brand positioning, brand strategy, and brand discipline, because it's how we make sure that advertising dollars aren't just one and done. When our marketing and our public relations tactics are grounded in brand, our messages go further, faster, and are more likely to engage consumers, helping us, helping, uh, get us, uh, helping us get more out of every dollar that we spend. And when we work together with our partners, including our partners in Milwaukee, uh, we all amplify a unified message, making our voice louder and farther reaching. So all of you have probably experienced the Travel Wisconsin brand through our marketing and seasonal campaigns. Maybe you've seen our ads engage with our social media, driven past our billboards, and we have many of these uh, throughout the Milwaukee area, read compelling news stories about Wisconsin, or come in contact with the dozens of other consumer touch points that we promote. What you'll notice is through it all is that our strategic initiatives are designed to drive awareness, reach travelers, and connect them with destinations like Milwaukee. Uh, we work with destination marketing organizations and convention and visitors bureaus to connect individual businesses and nonprofits with our marketing tools and strategies so that collectively we drive tourism throughout the entire state of Wisconsin. So uh, we can provide our industry partners with a campaign toolkit so you can leverage our brand idea in your promotions. It's filled with great examples and tips for ways to connect with memory makers looking to create shared moments of joy. From images and copy for your marketing materials to telling your story through travel writers, here's to those who Wisconsin was a brand idea carried through uh, in our 2022 campaign and it will continue with our 2023 campaign. We encourage all of our partners from across the state to use the toolkit as a resource as you plan your 2023 marketing projects. So feel free to take a quick um, photo of this QR code and this will link you directly to our brand toolkit. And if you don't have your phone ready, just know that you can go to industry.travelwisconsin.com and find the information on our brand toolkit. But we hope you all take a look at this and uh, hopefully can use it going forward. So Travel Wisconsin uh, has multiple ways to help our partners across the state. And uh, whether that's through the support of a new event, enhancing the marketing and expanding the marketing of an existing event, 
landing and marketing a one-time, one-of-a-kind event, planning a sales promotion, or participating in a larger multi-year destination marketing campaign, there may be some financial assistance Travel Wisconsin can offer through collaboration through our GEM grant program. So we'd like to share some uh, several valuable pieces of information about this program. Some background information, we at Travel Wisconsin work with a marketing budget of about $17 million. In addition to that marketing budget, we award $1.13 million every year in GEM grants. So please consider having a discussion with us regarding the grant program to fund your next big idea. Awarding grant dollars to our industry partners is one of the best parts of our job. So Heidi, I'll turn it over to you. And before we go into um, a little bit more detail about our grant program, I wanted to cover three big misconceptions we've heard related to our grant program. We hear that people are hesitant to apply because they think grant applications in general are difficult. People don't want to call their regional tourism specialists like David and ask for help because they think it would bias the process, and they are afraid to call me with questions for the same reason. These three things couldn't be further from the truth. We've created an easy to apply for grant, and if it does get complicated, David and I are here to help. He's not on the grant committee, so call him, even if you just want to brainstorm ideas or to see if your project is a good fit for any of our grant programs. And I'm also here to make sure your application isn't missing anything that would make it ineligible. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We'll begin by sharing a list of active GEM grants, GEM grant projects in Milwaukee County. Congratulations to any recipients who may be on the call today. These include the Beat Street Festival, Nightlight, Art 64, which was mentioned earlier, Summerfest Tech, MSO Blockbuster Stay and Play and the Scandinavian Design in the U.S. at the Milwaukee Art Museum. So again, congratulations to these GEM recipients. And we thought it would also be helpful to take a quick look at some of the, of the successful Milwaukee GEM grant projects from the last few years. Note that this is not an all-inclusive list. Hopefully some of the project names on this list will look familiar to you. Ideally, this list will help you understand what a successful gem, gem grant project is and might look like. So a few of them, again, recent, the J.R.R. Tolkien, the Art of the Manuscript, Exhibition Marketing, Sculpture Milwaukee, Black Arts Milwaukee, Fly and West Production, China Lights, Milwaukee Fringe Fest, and the Milwaukee Museum Mile. Those are some of the event-based gem grants. And then there's also the sales promotions, as was earlier stated, the MSO Blockbuster Stay and Play, Milwaukee Winter Shopping Campaign, How the Grinch Stole Christmas Sales Promotion, Celebrate Spring of Milwaukee, Experience East Town, Kemeru, reconnect across the lake and make it happen winter getaway. So the Joint Effort Marketing Grants or GEM grants as we like to call them offer funding by matching an organization's eligible marketing expenses to make a promotion or event come to fruition. The department awards $1.13 million in GEM grant funding each year. The eligible expenses for GEM grant funding include promotional and marketing expenses to attract and bring visitors to your destination to create an economic impact in the area. As we discuss, GEM grants. Keep in mind that this program is strictly for marketing projects. GEM does not cover operational expenses or site costs. There are five different GEM, types of GEM grants that are listed there on your screen. New event GEM grants can fund eligible marketing expenses for new events that have never been held and are outside the applicant's normal scope of operations. New events can receive up to, up to three non-consecutive years of funding. Existing event GEM grants can fund eligible marketing expenses for an existing event that is targeting a new geographic market, targeting a new demographic audience, or using a new media. Existing events can receive up to two consecutive years of funding. Sales promotion GEM grants can fund eligible marketing expenses for a promotion that offers significant incentives to entice travelers to visit for a limited amount of time, usually around six to eight weeks. Sales promotions can receive up to two consecutive years of funding. One-time, one-of-a-kind GEM grants are kind of what they state. They can fund marketing expenses for an event of such significance it will generate Midwest media attention. An applicant can only receive one year of GEM grant funding for a one-time, one-of-a-kind event. And then the destination marketing GEM grants. There are two categories for applying, 
development, and marketing projects. Destination marketing grants are intended to fund marketing projects in a specific geographic area that will benefit from increased visitor spending. These grants must involve at least three municipalities that will benefit from the campaign, and the project should be during a period of time where the area has not received a substantial number of tourists. This grant can be used to attract leisure travelers, business travelers, groups, motor coach, or media. Destination marketing campaigns can receive up to three non-consecutive years of funding. There are two types of destination marketing grants, development, development and marketing. Development grants are only available for a year one and can be used to support the funding of professional marketing research. This research should assist in discovering a region's differentiating qualities to define a brand, focus a promotional strategy, and secure data that measures the impact of visitors on the local economy. Marketing grants are available for up to three years or two if you've used the development grant as a year one to implement a region's promotional campaign based on recent data and evidence that demonstrates that defined brand and strategy. Several examples of past successful destination marketing gem grant projects include a sports Milwaukee brand development project to solicit, promote, and enhance youth, amateur, and professional sporting events in Milwaukee, the Milwaukee Gateway Destination Marketing Project, highlighting the area around Milwaukee Mitchell Airport, and an older project called Experience Our Fall Colors to highlight Milwaukee as an autumn travel destination to grow tourism outside of the peak summer tourist season. There are five rounds to apply for GEM grants each year, February, April, August, September, and November. Event-based GEM grants can be applied for in the February, April, August, and November rounds. That was new event, existing event, sales promotion, and one-time, one-of-a-kind. While destination marketing events, or excuse me, GEM grants are only re reviewed twice a year in April and September. A few important notes about GEM grants. There are different funding levels for each year of a GEM grant. For, most, for the most part, the first year can fund up to 75% of the eligible promotional expenses, where the second year can fund up to 50%, and third year, if applicable, can fund up to 25%, with a maximum award amount being $39,550 per year, except with the one-time, one-of-a-kind. That maximum amount is $28,250. Applications must be received at least 90 days before you want your GEM funded advertising to begin. That's regardless of the deadline date. We want to stress this 90 day rule as the timing of your project is key for making your project eligible. So it's best to discuss your project with us as soon as possible, even if it's just an idea, so we can guide you with your application timing. And please reach out to David or directly to me to discuss your project in the idea stage. We are happy to brainstorm your idea with you, discuss if the project is a good fit for GEM, and provide input so you can submit the best possible application. Also, remember that grants can only be awarded to nonprofit organizations, but do not be discouraged because, as you can see from our examples, there are opportunities for partnerships between private, for-profit businesses and nonprofit tourism organizations on marketing projects. All of our grant information can be found on our industry website, which is industry.travelwisconsin.com, and it's under Industry Resources and Grants. Grant applications can be submitted through our online portal at grants.travelwisconsin.com. It may also be beneficial for you to look at our annual grant portfolio that highlights successful grant projects that were funded in the past. You can find a link to the portfolio on our industry website. The portfolio, portfolio of successful grant projects might spur some ideas for your projects in your destination. And now we realize that we've covered a lot of information in today's meeting. For more information about Travel Wisconsin and the resources available to our industry partners, please visit industry.travelwisconsin.com or grab the QR code that's right here on your screen and it will take you directly to our industry website where you can find detailed information about the grant programs that were discussed today. As we shared earlier, please, we encourage you to reach out to myself or David to discuss any grant ideas you may have. We are happy to brainstorm with you and discuss your project to see if it's a good fit for any of the grant programs that we were highlighting today. David? Well, thank you, Heidi, and every partner who chose to participate in the webinar today. We hope that you found the information useful and timely, and we hope that today's conversation might spark some GEM grant ideas uh, with all of you. And as Heidi uh, shared, um, please, if you even have, have the smallest idea at this point, 
please reach out to either Heidi or myself and we'd be happy to brainstorm uh, the idea with you. That's one of the funnest parts of our job outside of showing up with the big uh, oversized ceremonial check is really working on the brain, uh, the brainstorming side of uh, GEM grant ideas. And as Heidi shared, we threw a lot of information at you. There was a lot of dates, a lot of percentages, a lot of dollar amounts uh, mentioned on the call today. So uh, please go uh, to our industry website. Um, if, if the QR code isn't working for you, uh, industry.travelwisconsin.com and just go to the GEM grant section of our website. And there's some really valuable tools there. Um, Heidi mentioned uh, this. This is a GEM grant portfolio. And this covers all of the successful uh, projects from the past fiscal year. But if you look on our website, we have a GEM grant portfolio going back about 10 years. So you could look at uh, all of the successful project projects that we funded for 10 years, and uh, that might spur some ideas. And then also, uh, there's a lot of information on our website, but also there is an information document, and it's a really quick primer on all of the information that Heidi and I uh, talked about today. And this will uh, cover all of the highlights. So once again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please reach out to us. We're happy to help. So any questions? So it doesn't look like we have any questions, David. David and Heidi, I just wanna say thank you so much for sharing this information. Oh, we have a question. Hold on, someone was typing. Would these grants help to support dollars to marketing specialists? So can you use it? That would be operating, right? Oh, we hire outside, they said. So if it's a part of a larger campaign and you, you are hiring somebody to help you with your marketing, yes, that can be an eligible expense. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Interesting. Just seeing if anyone, okay, nothing else came up. Well, thank you again. I know there was a lot of information. You can always reach out to any of us as well. We can help you get started. We can get you in contact with Heidi and David who are the experts on this. Remember, there is no such thing as a bad idea. Being able to come up with ways to promote our industry and our destination and the entire region is something that they love to do. And then when you do, make sure you let us know so we can help amplify that message. So thank you, Heidi and David, for being here today. I do want to um, also take a moment to say support the brewers. Go Milwaukee Brewers. I also want to take one moment to say that we um, want to support the Milwaukee Admirals in their um, game this week against the Coachella um, team. I can't. I'm blanking on the name, but but we, we need them to win game four. So go Admirals. And everyone, please enjoy yourself. Enjoy the beautiful weather. And we will hopefully see you at our annual meeting on June 14th. Have a great week.